Hello everybody. One of the biggest mysteries in archaeology of the Proto-Inca is what are these things? These are the nubs and what is going on here? What's going on with that? Well, there's another mystery. How do, they, how do they take sections of wall out like that? What are those? As for these, some of the comments have been saying, okay, these are for carrying the stones. So you'd insert a machine somehow around these and they, they could be for positioning the stones precisely or for carrying them around. I got another idea. Okay, I got another idea. We'll get to that. These are inverse nubs. Look, I'm starting to think, looking at all these, that these are so stones can slot into each other. It's sort of like a woodworking technique. So there would actually be more stones coming off the wall here, projecting outwards. And we have evidence of this, like if you look at Tiwanaku, by the way, I think this was, Tiwanaku was the, a home of the Viracocha, of the, of the builders, the original builders, the gingers, or the ginger giants. I think they were Cro-Magnons, or, or they could have been someone else. And these recesses here, these aren't for putting a statue in. These are for, these, this is for construction. So this is for something which would have been attached to this. It could also have been for hanging something up on the wall. But I don't know why you'd make something built into, like a, a hook built into the structure that, we don't build that way today. No way. Look, inverse nubs. And this is really interesting. What's going on here? You've got even three nubs. Here you've got two, two, and they're all almost unique sizes. It, it's really hard to see what's going on. Some nub, nubs look like they've even been chipped off. There's, this is obviously a carved or a built structure. It's got no nubs, I'm not sure what's going on there. And this is what I think is going on. Look, this is Stonehenge, right? Mortis and tenon joints. Mortis, the tenon is the nub. And essentially, two nubs to join two different rocks to another rock. And almost in a masonry like formation, the way we build bricks today, the way we build brick walls. That's what I think is going on with the nubs. They weren't a tool for carrying rocks around, they were a tool for joining rocks together. And here we see something like this as well. That's from Cuzco. And just look at that. That's obviously a join, but it's also a nub. This is a wall in Cusco, and basically this is... You walk on, in the streets of Cusco and, and you see this proto-Inca wall. This would have been from the Royal Palace a long, long time ago. Perhaps thousands of years ago. And if you look at this, there's so much stuff going on. It's almost as if the rocks were recycled from another structure. They were building blocks to, to join together. That's what these nubs are for, but not every block has the nub. Some have sort of inverse gradients. And the nubs are... It's almost as if these are inverse nubs as well. I don't know what they are, but they're for... Yeah, some people have said it looks like it's been scooped out while the rocks were soft. Who knows? Here, these almost look like nubs that have been taken off. It's almost as if it's all been recycled from other building materials. And they've left the nubs on there. And look, the, the top, the top of the stone has inverse nubs. Why would you need to put nubs on the top of a stone if it's used for carrying it around? That sort of shows it's either been recycled and modified or something else is going on and the nubs are not used for carrying stones around. They're used for joining up stones. But somehow they've all been smoothed down that the nubs are no, obviously no longer useful on this particular wall that they may have been useful in the past. Look, over here there's a concentration of nubs as if this whole area 
joined up. You see, this whole area here is going, it, it joins out to something extending outwards. Yet here, that's not important. And of course, people have been saying, okay, it's not a geopolymer, it's all carved, but if you look at the Giza Plateau, there's so much controversy about geopolymer. And it's just, you see the same thing. Megalithic wall is on Menkaure's pyramid. It's an unfinished megalithic or a destroyed megalithic wall. Pink granite, and it's got, several of them have nubs on them, just like in the Inca, you see. These were the same people. They fitted the stones perfectly, or they poured them. That is obviously a type of join. You see, this, I think this is in Cusco, and you see this type of stuff at Pumapunku. Look at that, that's for joining as well. It almost looks like a piece of concrete. Again, Stonehenge. And look at the size of this thing. And by the way, look, nubs, okay, for carrying things. Okay, but there's more here. And look, there's two up there. They, they're in pairs, you see. Here there's three. There's some on this side as well. It's almost as if these rocks belong somewhere else. There's two here as well. This man is pointing them out. They were supposed to be joined into some other structure. And they've been reused to build this wall. And guess what? Look, they're all walls. Walls are for defensive purposes. It's almost as if these rocks have been used in something else. And then this dying civilization, thousands of years old, decided to demolish what they had and reuse the stones to build a defensive structure to protect themselves against the ingress of, of, of their enemies. Their enemies were taking over, so they said, okay, let's, let's hide behind these, these great walls and use this to protect our dying culture, our dying people. That's what this is. That's why you only see them in terms of huge walls. This is something interesting from Sexay Huaman. There, there would have been a tiny stone in there. Maybe it's fallen out. But anyway, there's a nub there and there's an inverse nub up there. So it shows you there's stuff on top of as well. That's a bit weird. And it's just one. I think this is for joining stones up. Look at this. It's on a fortress. This would have been... This is Machu Picchu. And these would have been for a wooden structure, perhaps a gangway across here. So they were actually using nubs to join things together. And again, Stonehenge. They're used for joining. They're not used for lifting. This is a strange thing. Now, Puma Punku has the most extraordinary stuff. That, if I told you that was a piece of concrete built 50 years ago, you would believe me, maybe. But if I told you it was Puma Punku, unknown era, well, I mean, just look at it. Two again. This is used. This is used for joining. This is some sort of reinforcement. This is, a, this is a corner block. Again, a groove, a join, and even fine joins up there. This, this, is, this is perhaps how they cut it. This is a cut. And it's unfinished. And Stonehenge. Stonehenge seems to have been a, a more primitive version of what's going on in the Inca world. And of course the Stonehenge builders that would have been related to the pyramid builders. Tutankhamun's DNA, I think it tested as British, ancient British. Of course, Silbury Hill as well, their version of a huge pyramid. And this is the proof positive. This is what I've been waiting to show you. Two square nubs. That sort of thing is what you'd find. This is from Pumapunku. That sort of thing is what you would find at Pumapunku, that, those, those areas. But there's two, two square nubs. It shows that stones would have been fitted into here to join stones together. And they would have sat together like this, joined up. And I think that the reason that is no longer the case at walls such as Saxe Huaman is because those walls were built later on from recycled, from whatever they could find, so they could hide behind those walls in their fortresses against a vastly superior enemy. Stonehenge, this is an odd, odd blue stone. No other blue stone looks like that. It's got a groove in it, just like you see in Pumapunku. 
Bye.